Welcome to episode 11 of The Min Effect, a podcast where I talk about sports and games. Uh, recently, I've been saying sports and everything else, but I'm, I've decided that I want to stick with just sports and games. So that consists of obviously sports, which I've only talked about football yet, but I plan to talk about basketball and then games. So even though sports is also a game, um, games is like video games, poker, that kind of stuff, literally anything. So that that's like what I'm passionate about. And that's what I want to talk about. Anyways, going back onto topic with the Minnesota Vikings and the NFL combine for 2020, I have created a guide for all of you guys to watch for the 2020 NFL combine, all Minnesota Vikings fan, what to watch for, or even if you're not a Minnesota Vikings fan, what uh, we are going to watch for. And I selected positions, but I also selected players because I don't know every single player that's coming into this NFL draft, obviously. So I selected players I am excited to see play and positions is a huge thing, too. So you can see players you've never heard of. And then all of a sudden they now you now they're a household name to you, basically. So starting it off with offensive line. Now, this is every season. Uh, offensive line is a huge thing for the Minnesota Vikings to be looking at for this NFL combine uh, 2020, 2019. Every other year, the Minnesota Vikings have been looking at this offensive line. Uh, last year, taking Garrett Bradbury in the first round. Year before that, taking um, right tackle. Can't remember his name right now. I'm bad. I, I'm always bad with names when I'm talking, but I'll put his name right here because I'm always bad with remembering names when I'm doing my podcast. But when I'm editing, I remember everything. So, offensive line. So left tackle we need a new left tackle and guards guards are huge for this minnesota vikings team they've been delvin cook has looked great but that's with cj ham i mean we've seen delvin cook without cj ham you can't really do anything you can't because these guards are not giving him enough help i mean he'll have a great run sometimes he'll he looks great on the board but really you feed delvin cook the ball you feed any running back the ball they're gonna look good so you need guards to be able to help them and you need guards when you have a quarterback that sits inside the pocket all the time you need better guards we need to look at guards so i selected my favorite guard which is damian lewis lsu guard and um we saw him play uh we saw him win the championship and he was a key piece with that um wasn't like any star player, so i don't want to say he was a star piece of this but anyways uh Damian Lewis is a player you want to look for in this combine and possibly get him in the second round, third round. There's going to be a lot of people looking for guards in the third round, so I'd, I'd say second round. I wouldn't use a first-round pick on any offensive lineman, at least not this season, you, not usually. Uh, well, tackles, yeah, but there's not going to be a tackle at 25 that's going to be a first-round viable position. However, maybe my next one I'm going to talk about is Austin Jackson. Uh, to look for Austin Jackson, he's going to probably most likely be available at 25. Don't take an offensive lineman in the first round this year. Don't do it. Um, I think it's just not smart decision uh, at, at 25. If you're going to be ta taking a really key offensive tackle, but there's you're going to have to trade up for that. And it's not, it's, it's a big hassle. So I wouldn't do that, especially because there's these other players that the Mike, Minnesota Vikings can get at 25 that are going to have, impact maybe not immediate impact like a guard would but you get you get what i'm saying so austin jackson offensive tackle from usc and he used to be like a easy first round pick but i don't know i feel like i feel like teams are just not going to take him in the first round austin jackson he used to look like it and now he kind of looks like kind of middle of the pack compared to this entire draft class uh so taking austin jackson in the third round no He's not going to be available in the third round. Second round? I don't know. We're going to see how this NFL combine will t shape out. If the draft were to happen today, second round, Damian Lewis, probably third round. But this is just all my predictions. Did I say? Yeah, yeah. Uh, so the NFL combine hasn't officially kicked off because um, the whole practicing of the players hasn't started. And that's the piece we like to see. We also like to see the 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 um the conferences, but it's not, it's not the same as the practicing. So yeah, offensive line, literally all of offensive line, but specifically those two players is what I'm going to be looking for, but look for any no name player or anybody that shows up in the combine and performs. So next up now, this is who we're, I think the Vikings are going to use their first round pick on the Vikings will use their first round pick on either defensive lineman, defensive interior. That's who I think, or corners. Now there's probably not going to be a easy second string corner that's coming out of college this year so i probably wouldn't do it at least not at least not available at 25 so defensive line now in my mock draft that i did and i just recently published it's doing great on youtube so um it's my uh whole nfl pre-combine edition 
for my mock drafts. I'm going to be doing a post combine edition. So please be sure to subscribe so you can check out for when that comes out. Anyways, the Minnesota Vikings take Marlon Davidson defensive end from Auburn in this mock draft. And it's a great pick. I mean, defensive end. Okay. He plays defensive interior a lot. So that's why I say this because this is Andre Patterson and Mike Zimmer's type of move, take a defensive end, move him to interior. I'm sure he'd be fine with playing interior. In fact, I think he looked better as an interior, but in college, he kind of destroyed a lot of people and looked great as a defensive end too. Big guy can use him as an interior lineman. And I think that's what they should do better against the pass or yeah, better against the pass. You can, but mainly against the run. And that's what they need to improve on the most. So that's what I say that. And then also who I think the defensive, um, interior lineman who will light up this draft will be a draft combine will be Jordan Elliott uh, defensive tackle from Missouri now I've talked about him before how I want the Minnesota Vikings to take him I don't see it happening over Marlon Davidson Marlon Davidson looks more NFL ready and he looks more like a win now type of guy or a immediate impact type of guy while Jordan Elliott looks like he's this very athletic player explosive does a lot of things that you like to see however he has some time to improve, and I think the Vikings, you putting him on the Vikings immediately might not be the greatest decision. Maybe Marlon Davidson's a better decision, and I'm starting to look at that and think it's a better decision. So those are the de two defensive linemen. Next up is, this is also every year, I mean, you have the offensive linemen that you're looking for every year, and then you have the cornerbacks. Now, with Trey Waynes entering free agency, with Mackenzie Alexander entering free agency, with Xavier Rose being the most highest paid corner in the entire league, probably will get cut because of this cap space and probably take another cornerback. But this is a very deep corner class. And to take one at 25 could be a great decision, depending on who is still on the board and depending on how this combine will shape out. So that's why you should look at all these corners and how they play. I mean, Jeffrey Akuda is not going to be available. Christian Fulton will most likely not be available. And then all these other players have a possibility of still being available at 25 because of the depth that corners and people might want to take them in the second round. As viable as this position is, people might want to wait and maybe they don't perform up to their potential. I mean, CJ Henderson, Trayvon Diggs, these are players that could underperform in this combine and drop down a bit, as well as a ton of other guys. I mean, Jalen Johnson, uh, Cameron Dantzler, Bryce Hall. Oh, there's, I, there's a lot of players that you can be looking for that could be available for the Vikings in the first round, second round, third round, whenever they look, whenever they look for these, this corner. And they're going to take a corner, whether it's first round, second round, third round, whenever they're going to take a corner. The Minnesota Vikings are going to take a corner, whether it's first round, second round, third round, they're going to take a corner somewhere. And uh, so that's why you should have to look for this for any players that, that are going to outperform, any players that might underperform and fall to 25, Christian Fulton, CJ Henderson, we don't know. Um... So yeah, corner, watch for everyone. Don't get your eyes on Jeffrey Okuda because he's not going to be available, but everyone else. So next up is, this is this is a rough one. I did not want to put this on the list because of how much I've talked about and how much I want Marcus Mariota to be a Minnesota Vikings next year. And that is quarterbacks. Um, don't use a first round pick on a quarterback and a second round pick just hurts me. It's like you have a great quarterback but I think you need a quarterback to play for Kirk's job. I mean, Kirk, you put a chip on his shoulder, he performs better. Now, I know he's 0-9 on Monday Night Football, but he's won a lot of big games when he had chips on his shoulders. So you put a player that can play him for his job. You don't know how his career is going to continue to shape out. Say you get a great backup. You can trade him if, if, if Kirk looks great. Get someone who can play him for his job. And... I listed a couple other ones. Biggest one is probably Jalen Hurts from Alabama. Um, he played in a great organization in Alabama and showed a lot of promise and will most likely be available in the third round. And this is my favorite pick in the third round uh, to get Jalen Hurts. I love this. Uh, if they can't manage to get Marcus Merida, which I won't be surprised, as much as I would love this, I wouldn't be surprised because it's negative $21 million cap space. So to get Jalen Hurts in the third round. That's a big player you should watch for. Don't spend your time watching for these Joe Burrow, Tua, uh, Jordan Love. What's the other guy? Justin Herbert. Don't watch for those guys. They're not going to be available for the Vikings. And, well, Jordan Love probably will be available at 25, maybe even Justin Herbert. But you don't want to take a quarterback in the first round, maybe not even second round. And also, another one, Jacob Easton from Washington. He's made a lot of... Uh, a lot of People pay attention to him recently with his senior bowl performance, with his other performances. Jacob Easton, um, this player will most likely be available for the Vikings at 20. No, not at, well, of course at 25, but in the second round, possibly 
depending on how this combine shapes out, how the drafts end up shaping out, this stuff is so unpredictable, at least after the first round it's very unpredictable of how things are going to shape out so quarterbacks those are two of the people i think you should be watching for two of the people i will be watching for and really any quarterback that could play kirk for his job uh if i'm missing anyone oh like always let me know and uh this last one and this is every year i don't care how great the receiving core is this is every year i love to watch these wide receivers and um I know we have Diggs, I know we have Thielen, and I know BC is a great third string, but wide receivers is such a fun position to watch because you can, you'll can you have some players that will, for no reason, you'll never heard of them. They'll look just like these top players. I mean, with CD Lamb and Jerry Judy, who will obviously get taken in the first, first half of the first round, and then you have some no-name receiver who comes up and may not run as fast as them now running. I don't see anyone running that speed of their of their of the cd lamb and jerry judy but will catch have the same catch percentage same everything footwork a lot of things and it'll get a lot of scouts to be like oh that's a good player but they'll still end up passing on him and he's going to be available in like the fifth fourth round and um some team will take him and could, he could come in and become a third string now i know we don't need a third string but say the season shapes out bad we use a late round pick on a on a uh on a wide receiver like when we use the fifth round pick on stefan Diggs. hey another player that might light up the combine look great amazing like some of these greater players in the in the draft but since they don't have the tape to show for it you don't want to use a higher pick on them so you don't use a, your third your first Third, three picks, your first, whatever, and then uh, eventually will be available. And with a lot of other players that may have performed in the combine, and then uh, that's when those players usually end up going fourth, fifth round. These like mid round, these mid draft wide receivers are something that I love to watch for. And with the um the insane draft class of these wide receiver position. Uh, will really have I know there will be like one player maybe two players that will be a wide receiver and just look like CD Lamb look like Jerry Judy may not run as fast they might not run like a four or five or whatever they run um but they'll perform in all the other categories and could come in and be a possible two string in the future maybe even if you land on hitting another Stefan Diggs which that's a that's a lottery ticket I mean really uh to land a player like that in the fifth round but Try it again, and if they end up having to trade digs halfway through the season, like I said, if they're in a horrible spot and it looks they get a lot of trade offers, maybe that's when they start going into a rebuilding phase and they end up trading, uh, end up trading digs. I don't want to see BC as a two. BC is not a two receiver. We saw him play inside the slot as a three. We saw him even fill in for Thielen as a two, and he looked okay. It's just he's it didn't look like the offense was complete. It felt like it needed something still, and not, it needed Thielen obviously. So, um. Those are my five. I think that's five. Yep. Those are my five positions that the Vikings that we should look for in this NFL 2020 combine that kicks off January, no, I mean, February 27th. I think that's when the practicing starts. Now it's a, okay. It's already officially kicked off, but it's only been like uh, press conferences and that, and that kind of stuff. We saw, we saw Rick Spielman say, we saw him say, talk on the digs trade and none of us are surprised. Okay. I made a whole rant video about this whole digs is getting traded thing. And it's just a bunch of nonsense. Spielman talked on it and nothing surprising for me, but it made me smile. And then, um, so those are the five positions that, uh, us Minnesota Vikings fan are going to be looking for in this draft and some players I gave, but really watch for like everyone that could be available for the Minnesota Vikings and let me know anybody I missed on if there's any players I missed on any positions I missed on anything I'm missing in this video because like I said I don't know everything so if you come to me for a guide you might not get the best the best results just being honest but some people down below might also have great ideas so just let me know anything I'm missing as well as literally anything. Also, my channel, I've this is a new podcast I've started. This is only my 11th episode of it. So if you could please support me, if you enjoyed the video to hit a like, or if you would like to see more of this content of The Min Effect, a podcast where I've been talking about sports and now games, um, make sure to hit the subscribe button as well as the bell next to it so you can be notified anytime a new episode is coming out. And as always, till next time.